All right. So I wanted to talk about my Go web app organization because I feel like I didn't do a good job in the last video. Someone left a comment. Look, I know I shouldn't make a video out of a one comment, but that's just where I'm at. So I, I used my the, – this is the maximum that my diagramming skills go, okay? This is Figma. I use Figma to make this. And this is the best you're going to get, all right? There's going to be some arrows in the next one, but... Okay, so the Go app is split up by model and then app, and then there's dependency injection in main and test. <clears throat> so the reason why it's split up like this and I it's like tied together in main and, and test uh, is because it makes it easy to either run as an actual application in production or to make a fake model that you can return anything you want from its functions to test each individual, like how the app is going to respond based on like what's in the database. All right. So this is just, this is just a basic end tier, uh, web application, but I just wanted to go over it real quick as like my first ever made for YouTube video. Um, and hopefully it's like a higher quality cause I'm stream I'm recording straight from straight from OBS. So I, I hope it's okay. All right. So, um, the way it works is pretty simple, right? I have a bunch of arrows here. I have, um, <laughs> so this is the same thing, but just with arrows. I don't really know how else to, how else to say it. So a request comes in, uh, the handlers and the views, which make up the app, so this, this is just regular vanilla Go handlers, which I'll explain. I'll get to the code in a second, but um, I don't, I'm not using any frameworks. The only de external dependency I'm using is for SQLite, uh, the SQLite database. That's it. I'm using Go SQLite, um, and, and that's all. So, so the request comes in, the handlers uh, match on the pattern, which is um, really naive. It's, it's like so naive. And then the handlers... First, they reach out to the model if they need to, and then the model returns, right? So that's what the little arrows are for. <laughs> this is, it's the best it's going to get, okay? Like, and I don't know what's up with the green arrow. I tried to make it sort of like squiggly, but it came out as a, it came out as a arc or something. I, I don't know what it is. Anyway, so the handlers, then after they're done talking to the model, they, they, they render the HTML, uh, they put a CSRF token in there if they need to. Uh, they check the session cookie to see if anyone's logged in. And that's pretty much the extent of it for this particular application, which is just a uptime monitor. And then they the handlers also call the response writer and they write the response to the socket. So that, that's it. That's it for the presentation part of the video. And now I'm moving on to the actual code. So I just keep this in mind when you're looking at the code because I've named the files the same thing, right, as the, uh, as the code. So um, I actually didn't have this running, so I have to get it going. All right, so if you look at the Go files, right, there's, there's uh, four Go files, app, which is what you just saw, model, which represents all the actions you can take in the database, and main, which is what does the uh, dependency injection, and then flash, which is just like a helper for flash messages with the uh, flash cookies. So I'm going to start with main because it's the, it ties everything together. I don't have a test currently. <laughs> I've, I, also, I, I can't take credit for this uh, type of organization for web app. That's this is from Ben Hoyt's blog, and I just sort of adapted it to my own thing. All right, so the first thing is we get a connection to SQLite, and this could be Postgres or whatever. The next thing is making a new model, which was from the the little database icon from before, which was a uh, Bootstrap <laughs> icon. All right, so the model is actually kind of nice. So before I get to the new model function, I want to look at these structs, right? Take a look at these structs. It's they each struct represents a database table and you don't necessarily need to do this, but I feel like it's probably good. I mean, it's 
one level of indirection. I mean, you could do this two ways. One, you can make a struct for every database table, or two, you can make a struct for every returned query that comes back, which I'm starting to think that makes more sense. You just kind of wind up with a lot more structs. But like, if you start joining things and and your queries get kind of crazy with sums and maxes and stuff of you know functions, I don't know. Maybe that could be maybe that could be a thing. And then the last struct is on line 39. It is. Uh, let me make this bigger so we could so we could all see it here. So it's not like a uh, it's not like a mystery to us all here. Okay, there's the model, which is just a random number generator for sessions and CSRF tokens. Just sessions. And then there's the database itself, right? The pointer to the database itself. So here is a new model. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because it's really big now. <laughs> so new model makes, it turns on pragma foreign keys because it's SQL light, right? It initializes the random number generator. It creates a sessions table, which is what stores whether or not someone's logged in. It creates a users table. It creates a sites table. That is what will be monitored. And then it creates a pings table, which it will get inserted into if a site ever goes down, right? So by default, when you enter a site, the first ping is false because I haven't sent an HTTP request to it. So I don't know if it's up or not. So this is, remember, this is an uptime monitor, right? Not super important, but there it is. So the new model is responsible for any initialization for the database that you need. The next thing is a list of actions you can take on the database. I actually, Ben Hoyt actually did this a little better and I got rid of it, even though I'm not quite sure I should anymore. It was an interface that represented the model. And so like the interface had all the functions listed right there, but I can sort of, um, you know, do the same thing here. I, there's a bunch of functions, but basically there's ones for creating new rows in each of the tables, create user site session. And then there's uh, one that lists sites and you can update the email. It's very specific, right? It's very naive. You can find a user from their passcode, which I will explain eventually. Um, so yeah, that's it. The, it, it. the database code itself is, I mean, if you watch the live stream, it is very naive. It is the most straightforward, I think, database access code I've ever seen. Um, but you know, it's it's performance. So anyway, so that's that's the model. The the app is the um, it's more interesting, I think, uh, because it has more stuff going on. It's got I've I've got middleware, which is just regular Go handler funks. Uh, the one thing I did is I strayed from this idea of just passing in an interface to uh, the HTML. So I made it like a sort of a strongly typed view situation. Um, and this, every view that gets rendered, every HTML, every bit of HTML that gets rendered runs through this function. And so I can control things like setting CSRF tokens for the form and um, setting current user ID for the layout. Um, if you want me to go over like how I did the template mapping, I will in another video, but I feel like it's pretty straightforward. And I think I found it on Stack Overflow anyways, but, but I can, I can talk about it. Um, so yeah, this is how the views get rendered, right? So there's, there's two layers here. There's the handlers and the views. So the handlers are in ad routes and this is just plain old go uh, handlers, right? Like there's no web framework here at all. There's nothing special going on. It's just go standard library. Um, you can tell because there's all these imports here. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, from GitHub. So, uh, these are the routes. I have little helper functions, but it's kind of not super important. And so th these are all the routes in the whole app, right? Right here in this add routes function and the views, uh, are all here, right? So you can see, there's some global stuff for the layout. So the current user, so I could show the nav menu as like, okay, are you logged in or not? CSRF tokens for forms, um, a flash message that gets shown if, if like something happens, like a destructive action or something. And then there's home, you can make a new site profile and login, right? So let me, um, before I, I mean, this is all like pretty basic stuff, but before I show you, I'll show you the home handler, right? So this is the home handler. And before, let me just start this up. 
Yep, okay. So this um, looks for a flash message for the passcode, which is uh, your uh, unique login identifier. Uh, this looks for the success flash. And then uh, I have this, uh, I feel like every Go code base has this <laughs> uh, log.fatal if error is not equal nil. Because uh, if something happens here, it must be really bad. Um, and then I have the view. I always construct this view struct before I call render, right? And so I set the success flash if there is one. I set the passcode if there is one. And then I also have the list of sites from the current user if there are any. Um, so let me just show you what it looks like. So I'll, uh, I want to just show you how it goes here. So this is how it looks. Um, when you first go to the website, it is very stri straightforward, right? This is just for learning purposes. But I think I will actually uh, deploy this. So when you click this button, you're logged in, right? Uh, that Just that one button, you're logged in. You get a passcode. It's shown here. Um, you get There's a secret passcode. If you forget it, blah, 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 you can go to the profile page. So all that stuff that you saw, logout, profile, all that stuff is here. Um, and delete your account is also there, right? Uh, and update email is this form. So sort of everything that you can do is like well-defined in the code. And it's actually not a lot of code. I mean, for statically typed languages, it, it's not bad. <laughs> I feel like I would be writing a similar amount of code with Rails. I might be fighting the framework a little bit more, but what are you going to do? That's it. That's how I organize my Go projects. Um, if you have any questions, comments, let me know. If you want to see more videos about uh, different languages or how I would make web apps in other ways, or like if you want me to go over like a framework because you don't understand, whatever it is, I'm here to help. I will make a video about it and we can talk about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.